Kyoto, we're going to rent bikes and we're gonna take them for a ride all the way up to the north side of the city. And we're gonna go to a palace, a temple, and some gardens and get some really good food. It's gonna be an awesome day. I'm hand sanitizing my, uh, my bike handles. This is where we're staying and they have all of the city bikes and they have free hand sanitizer, so get it clean. This one for 16 minutes. Holy sugar. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> Biking is so much fun when cities are set up for biking. Kyoto is like a perfect city to bike in. Honestly, so much of the population here does it. And they have bike lanes like everywhere. And a lot of them are actually even on the sidewalks, which is cool. Like half the sidewalk is designated for bike riding. So you get places faster and you have a little fun. And exercise. Better than taking the metro. We have made it almost to our first stop in the morning. A little bit of a walk up the hill, but it is a temple that is leafed with gold, and I'm so excited to see it. We were walking on the way to the temple, and as we were walking up this hill, we came across this little uh, storefront window. Ever since we had that curry uh, bun, in uh, Tokyo, we've been like obsessed and we've been looking for one ever since. Unfortunately, they told us that it's takeout only, but this is what got us to stop and walk inside. Look at how delicious this is. Although they did not have any curry buns, we found a few other things that seemed very interesting. Hopefully it's uh, savory. Mm -hmm. I'm all for savory, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Almost to the palace. So we still haven't had a chance to eat our delicious pastries. We got to the Kinkaku or the Golden Pavilion and there was absolutely no line. It's 400 yen per person to enter, but you're not allowed to eat when you're here. So we'll have to eat them after, but we could not pass up coming in right now because there's almost no other people here. Honestly, it's just the timing right now that we're here in Japan that we get some of the most beautiful places to ourselves. So while it's amazing to have this place semi all to ourselves, there's a few other people here. It's a one way. I feel like it's making Evan and I walk even slower because we know we can't come back. The statesman that acquired it from the Sionji family back in 1397. It was functioned as the official guest house. Do you think it's on Airbnb? Probably not. I think this is as close as we can get to the inside of the temple. They gave us like a little pamphlet too that shows us what the inside of the third level is. It's all gold, golden windows. It's pretty stunning. Just leaving the Golden Pavilion now. We're gonna go find a spot to eat our delicious pastries. Um, but 
We've now been to the Silver Pavilion and the Gold Pavilion. Um, our friend Mayu brought us to the Silver Pavilion because she said most tourists go to the Golden Pavilion, it's a lot busier, um, and she likes the gardens around the Silver Pavilion better. I would agree with her. There's not really a big garden area to walk through here. Um, the Golden Pavilion itself is really impressive. It's beautiful, um, and especially if you get it on a clear sunny day where the sun just reflects off the gold. Um, but if you're looking for more of like an overall experience, I would, I think I would suggest the Silver Pavilion just because the, the gardens are beautiful. You get an overlook view over the city um, and the temple itself, it's not silver, but it's beautiful. We're gonna go find a picnic spot to just to have our pastries. And then we have one of my all time favorite Japanese foods coming up for lunch. We're about a 15 minute walk away from the next temple that we wanted to go to. And the original plan was to get Okonomiyaki there. But I just looked now, it is about 10 minutes to two and the place is open from 11.30 to 1.30 and then it closes and then they reopen for dinner. So they're not open till 5.30. So may have to be another day thing, but we're so far north that I just don't know if we're gonna be all the way back up here. So plans change. Fortunately, that kind of happens when you just go with the flow is sometimes means you can't do what you wanna do. Before we go into the temple, cause we're finding out that you really can't eat around these places, which is totally okay. We wanna be respectful, um, but we're hungry. We bought those pastries like three hours ago and it's totally time to eat them. So we found ourselves a little place to sit Got a little got a little hand sanitizer and we are going to enjoy our pastries. Look at that. Oh, it's kind of light. Light and airy. Okay, so no eating here, but he was really polite about it. And he told us where we could go eat, so we're just gonna relocate. But let me just tell you that bread was fresh that I got one bite was it? of. Yes. It was good. So you can't eat inside the temple grounds, but we're not inside yet, so I think we can eat here. And there's a bench here. And they don't want to walk and eat. And there's no walking and eating too, so. Oh, where were we? We were eating. We were eating. Mm, really yummy bread. And then fresh figs. I think it's gonna be plump, really good. Sweet or savory? Sweet. We both wanted savory things and we ended up getting two sweet things. Oops. So Yev and I tend to be very frugal, but I was reading up about this garden and people said that it would be absolutely amazing. It's just way too crowded. And we just felt like we're here when there's like no one here and the cherry blossoms are in full bloom. Like we can't miss out on this just by being cheap. So we paid the 500 yen each and I think it was the right decision. Cherry blossoms are on fire. Also, this is not the first treat in the Silver Pavilion, there's some trees which are like hollow and part of the bark continues on in a silver tree. That's, that's kind of wild. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I was pointing out earlier how cool it is that the little shoot comes out of like the big trunk and then it has flowers. It's like you wouldn't expect that. You'd expect it would need to like go from this thick to thinner, then thinner, and then have the flowers. It's really beautiful. It makes it so like the big trunk just covered in flowers. Like, look at that one right there. That one. Look at this one. It's like. Oh wow. It's like magical. Mm, they're so delicate. All right, so we're almost at the rock garden. It looks like you have to take your shoes off. Looks like they have a scale model of the rock garden. Supposedly you can only see 14 of them from any given angle. He's trying to see if he can see all 15. So, I was able to see all 15. What? But, I was standing up. There's no way you could see the 15th rock unless you're at the far, 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 like the last like two seats. So this rock garden was made in 1500 by a very renowned monk. I guess there might be a lot of speculations why you can't see all 15. The idea is that this is supposed to be beautiful, even though it has no trees inside of it. What's amazing is that this garden has been here for 520 years. 
the amount of people that have taken their shoes off and sat here in 520 years and taken in this site, like, that's crazy. And I was like, oh my gosh, it hasn't changed. And Evan's like, well, every day somebody does rake it. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, it's nice. Instead of the hustle and bustle that it normally is traveling and running around, it's nice to take our shoes off and just enjoy the peace of the moment. So we totally just zenned out at the rock garden. It was really nice. Amy Super. even fell asleep a little bit. I did, a little bit. It was just so comfy and the sun was coming in. I was like a little kitten. Oh, it was lovely. It was very peaceful, very quiet. So we're gonna check out the rest of the gardens around in this temple area. Um, and then we're gonna, essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to kill time until we can go eat because the, <laughs> Restaurant opens at 5.30 p.m. and uh, we still have a little ways till then. It actually reminds me of like Japanese architecture. They have a lot of like wooden slates that go up and down and they're like skinny, usually really thin. Uh, they put them over the windows and over like the front uh, doors. And these like trees, these branches going up. Oh, yeah, thanks, babe. But these branches going up and down perfectly it just reminds me of the Japanese architecture. I feel like I'm drinking a fine glass of wine. <laughs> that one smell good? Not as good as the white ones. Those ones smell really good, but you gotta jump up really high and then. Climb up a little bit, yeah. All for the smell. All for the smells. Smell good. Do you smell good? Smell great. I was trying to make a video for my Insta story about how beautiful this garden is, and I was like, look at them, they're just so pretty. And then this one right here comes up into my video screen and it's like, I know, I'm so pretty. <gasps> oh my gosh, I almost just wiped out. Apparently you can't keep walking. There's this beautiful big white and gray and actually a little black bird. Huge, long neck, long legs, and he flew in and I was like, Yevin! And Yev was like taking pictures so he couldn't get a video of it. And then we saw him like coming out of a bush and his neck was all elongated. And all of a sudden I was like <coughs> And then Yevin joined me, so both of us are just like <coughs> And the bird all of a sudden just came over and started flying around the lake a little bit. And we're like, we speak bird, you're welcome. You're welcome. We're like one of the last people in here. There's a taxi and there's some guys who just got into that white uh, sedan back there. If you're in this area, because you want to see the golden pavilion, I highly recommend coming down here. And it's only a 15 minute walk from uh, the golden pavilion. We're gonna go get some okonomiyaki and I'm so excited because the place opens at 5.30 and I think it's 5.30 like, yeah. right now. I think, so. I think we have like a 10 minute walk, five, five 10 minute walk. All right guys, we'll see you there. So we found the place and we're just not sure if they take card. We only have like $12. Um, and it looks like things are like six, five, seven. Nine. We're gonna try it. Konnichiwa. finished one of the most amazing meals. I wish we could have recorded it to share it with all of you, but this restaurant is owned by a husband and wife and they're in there and they cook together and they're just the sweetest host. Seriously, it was like one of the best meals we've had. Oh my gosh. And I we keep saying that like the hospitality here is amazing at every place pretty much, but this was like, out of this world. Out of this world. And we asked them, their English was really good, and we asked them how they learned English, and they said just from tourists, which shows you that they talk with people. The food was delicious. It was not super expensive in any way. And she even gave us like a little lesson on how to eat everything. Cannot recommend that restaurant enough. If you are going to the Golden Pavilion 
and you walk over to the other temple, it's only 10 minutes away. You gotta eat there. They basically told us that right now, they're only getting the locals. So not only is there no tourists that are stopping by, but even the Japanese locals aren't really. So it's really hard for the business. It's so, only like the regulars, the people that always come. But it was a super awesome experience. And I think that's it for tonight. And we'll see you right early in the morning. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.